This one shares the preparation it took to impress Martin. You greased it again? Come on! More than once. And he greased it again! Amazing! <laughs> I'll take it. We're a crew of three flying two diamond twins across the Atlantic. Woo! Canada, we did it! Welcome to Canada! Yeah, thanks man. That was awesome. And congratulations to the crossing. So how did I find myself here? Well, we need to rewind a little bit. This is the biggest general aviation flight that I've ever been on, and the preparation for this was daunting. It all starts here. Yeah, with the roll of fiberglass or composite. Exactly. Composite, fiberglass, Kevlar. I was inspired to share much of this through Mickey's eyes. We continue on this checklist. And then this is your first... How many times have you flown this one? Uh, this this first... is my first flight in this aircraft, yeah. yeah. This is also a checklist we go uh, through with the customer when he arrives. This is basically what we do during the acceptance flight. This episode is about what it took to become a part of this crew. Mickey is one of the newest ferry pilots on the Diamond Aircraft team, and he's about to fly across the Atlantic solo for the first time. Leading into this project, I was feeling a lot of pressure, both as a filmmaker and as a pilot. Mickey's constant enthusiasm and positive energy was infectious. We started with a tour of the factory. Customers get quite like amazed when you tell them, this will be your aircraft. Right. And they're like, what, this? This is like fabric. And we're like, oh man, really? Yeah. <laughs> Seasoned Chief Pilot Martin is leading us on this mission. How, how many times have you done this flight, you figure? <sighs> I don't know, I, I stopped counting. My part started with a one-way airliner flight from Toronto to Vienna and then with very little prep, jumping on board as pilot flying during the 4,000 mile trip, heading westbound over the Atlantic. How much we see of Iceland at the end of the day, I don't know. I had one day to immerse myself here before launching. So if you, if you make composite, you would have like hard, soft, hard. And this is the soft in the middle. And I have I told you that, that everything in the diamonds are push rods. Yeah, that's true. No cables beside of the rudder. Compared to other aircraft manufacturers, we use two spars which protect the fuel tank, which is in here. Final brief. Final brief. So you're going to be 10 minutes behind us, but that's a long 10 minutes. Like you're still on your own in a lot of ways. I'm on my own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get in the seat. Let's do it. Okay, I'm left seat, so it's time to put away the camera. See you on the other side. A few days before departing for this trip, I managed to get a familiarization flight at the Canadian base in a prototype DA-62 with factory demo and test pilot Jared. I can't thank him enough for setting me up for success to fly with Martin. After the glow extinguishes, uh, it starts like a car. So start left, so with the throttle is at idle, start left. <laughs> I can't believe how simple it is, but and, it, uh, it is what it is. This is so simple. And it starts just like a car. So throttle is what it is, because it's a, at idle? Yeah. It's an automatic. Idle? So just push. do it. Clear your prop. Left. <laughs> If you need to move your pedals, there's a switch there too. I should have referenced that. This one? So there's a rocker switch to move your pedals to where they're comfortable for you. Okay, something like that. Okay. okay. So we have oil pressure, so that's good. Uh, right engine master switch comes on the same way. We look for the glow indication the same way with that. Uh, glow indication extinguishes. You're clear right. So clear okay. right. Okay. I can't believe how easy it is. It is like a car. Oil so pressure is good. Pressure. This, I guess this isn't novel for you, but this is pretty unique, right? I mean, it's, it's very unique for the industry. It kind of starts the way you, you kind of expect it to, as, a, as a, if you weren't getting involved in aviation coming back. So, I mean, if you bought an airplane in the 60s, it started similar to your car, had the vapor lock problems of your car. Right. It would seem normal, right? But if you came into aviation these days, this is probably more what you would expect. Yeah. Procedures in the DA-62 and the DA-42 are very similar. So let's jump over to the flight with Mickey for the run-up, ferry pilot style. If I go to A now and you, we feel a little bump, that means that we're running on B and we jumped over to A. So let's see. Yeah, so we're running on B. So we go back to auto. We felt that again. Now we go to B and we should not feel anything. Perfect. Same with the other one. A, auto, nothing. So we know we're running on A. B, we felt that. And back to auto. And we know we're running on A. How the system is choosing that, um, it always takes the ECU which got the lower time. 
now. We check the engine temperatures. We have 59 on the left and 58 on the right. Gearbox is warm enough. And now we just press both of them. Now we got two, uh, four fail lights. Now it, it goes up. Then it cycles once. Now it goes back again. Second one, other ECU. Goes up. Fetters the prop. Or turns the prop. Then it goes down again. And then we have all fail lights are gone. I remove my fingers from the test button. Your run up is complete. That's amazing. Same thing with the right side. So switch up to. Oh, yeah. Jared had taught me to do them one at a time, but either way, that is the simplest run up I'd ever seen. After the pre takeoff briefing, he gave me some great type specific pointers that helped me impress Martin. How long has it been since you've flown a twin? Uh, a little while. Well, you fly tailwheel stuff, so yeah. when you fly this airplane, the nose is pointed on it. So uh, for the takeoff roll, obviously keep it keep it straight with your feet. That's, uh, that's all normal from what you're used to flying. Uh, I want you to just keep your eyes outside and study the sight picture because the nose on a diamond points. So you're going to have a tendency to want to land it like this. Okay. Uh, so just look outside. Uh, rotation 76 knots. I'll just call it for you. If you do full power against brakes, then uh, you just need a bootloader right rudder, which is probably going to feel pretty natural for you. And yeah. then your neutral control position is about here. All right. So you, you suggest partial or full power on? Well, go ahead and do full power and just expect that you need a bootload of right rudder once you uh, get rolling. Okay, power is set. So power is set. We like We're it. good. Temps of pressure. Go ahead and go. All right, airspeed's alive. You're watching your sight picture. Yep. There's 76. Go ahead and rotate. Just ease her off. There we go. All right, so positive rate. Positive rate. Bring the gear up whenever you're ready. And your elevator trim's here and on the switch also, if you uh, need to adjust that, uh, whatever your preference is. I'll turn on your pitot heat now to get rid of that. And do I need to sync the props or does it do it itself? Nope. We'll just, uh, we'll leave it that way. So you can go ahead and bring your flaps up whenever you're ready. And then once we kind of get to the end of the runway here, you can... Uh, you want 110 or something for climb? Or yeah, what? 110's perfect. While briefing the day before our mission, Martin confirmed we'd be facing a lot of actual IMC conditions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, Stephen, you won't see much of Austria, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah this is what it is but during the acceptance flight with mickey we had great vfr conditions so i got to see a lot uh so nice of you of the airport and the factory by the town i mean it's like <laughs> i didn't expect it to look instantly like classic austria <laughs> wow postcard out there so this is the beginning of the alps exactly next thing uh, get the checklist here now you see how awesome that is 65%, 5.5, 5.6 gallons an hour. So that's in total 11 gallons. Yeah. We had a close look at this unique engine during the factory tour. So what you see here is the, the turbocharger. Up here, we got the common rail, deciding how much fuel gets into the cylinders. It's all electronically controlled from the ECU. 95% power and level off. Yeah. And then uh, you can turn your fuel pump switches off, the rocker switches now, as your kind of cruise checklist. That's your entire cruise checklist. Okay. All right, so back power off then, because we're level? If you want, or if you want to go fast, we can leave it up. <laughs> it's uh, diesel, so we're only burning 9 gallons a side right now. So uh -oh. we're burning 18 gallons an hour, and we'll Forward. continue to accelerate. You can pull it back a little bit to keep it in the green arc. I knew it was likely this would be one of the quietest piston aircraft I'd ever flown. So part of the test today was to decide which headset I'd be wearing for about 25 hours during the crossing. Yeah, so there's the DA-62 for you. That's nice. Check one, two. Yeah, I just changed my headset uh, sensitivity and the noise cancelling. It's got three stages, so that's interesting. Oh, wow. It's pretty good. I would say it's still a little loud, but not bad for an in-ear. This is the Pro Flight from longtime sponsor Bose. Mickey flies with them all the time in Diamonds, which inspired me to test here but they're mostly aimed at jet and turboprop pilots. We've set 85%, we're level at 21, and we're happy there. Yeah, so we'll clear the control zone here like this, Yep. and then we will do some work to find out how to get on top of this nonsense, uh. do some upper air work, and then we'll start making you work the, uh, the Garmin. This early prototype version of the DA-62 has been recently updated to the latest avionics, which is why we chose it for this flight. It flies pretty nice hands off. And the DA-50 is like twice as stable as this thing. Really? Yeah but it has some non-critical known issues, such as the gear unsafe light in the up position occasionally coming on, 
and it's got a different flap speed than the production models. The Austrian guys will probably scroll out like this, and they've uh -huh. got this range ring, right? And they'll probably use that because that can give you your your. Are you familiar with how the range ring works based yeah. on your power setting there? Very cool. So they tend to find the sweet spot. They tend to look at <laughs> at that. I think. It's just that's it. There's no leaning. There's no nothing else. Yeah, right? that's it. Nothing to worry about. Wow. So you just set the power based on your best endurance or best range or whatever you want it to be. Whatever you want. If you run 84% power, it turns into 16 gallons an hour even. Okay. So I tend to run that for most things, and it gives me about a four, four and a half hour range. So I like to land with an hour of fuel no matter where I go. And my bladder likes to land after three hours pretty yeah, much every time. I so think I'm going to be testing that on this trip. I don't think they're going <laughs> to... Controlled dehydration. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, so if you want to go ahead and take the autopilot off and just do some steep turns or something to kind of get a feel for how it... Uh... All right, so it looks like it's just us up here. The air work went well and was totally standard, so I'm not going to share that. But before getting into it, Jared suggested we disable the electronic stability and protection. You got to go to the menus to do that, right? Yeah, so I can go here to uh, system setup and I can actually disable the ESP. Yeah, let's do that for now, sure. So ESP's off. We'll get rid of the caution. Okay. Oh, you're fast, man. Oh, sorry, I should really slow down. I should no, be no, it's good. I, I should just, be making you do all the button pushing. We've got a rocker to kill the ESP. Oh, nice. Just because we're going to do aerobatics. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. I think it's just remembering how to get myself places with buttons and no touch. Yeah, because this won't. Nothing's touching here, right? Yeah. At best, I don't have much glass experience, but the RV14 we just built is based on the G3X Touch and the GTN 750, so I got a lot of learning to do. Straight and level flight. So what I usually always use is here the four flight tool. I go in here to map, and then I look at my air spaces. I have echo, and we can go up now. You don't have it here? I have it. But you like that better? Yeah. That's to your be purse? fair, yeah. yeah for no. for airspace uh, structure, I like the four flight more. So a bit of climb power. And it's what you take with you in every airplane. It's just consistency. I had that in flight school. So my flight school, Aviation Academy Austria, used used four flight. And it's such a good tool. Just to know that you have a secondary thing is just great. So, straight and level flight was good. Canopy ceiling. This is interesting for us now, because, or in this aircraft for me, because approaching 8,500, because I have to fly this one through the uh, over the Atlantic. So, it's cold up there. Yeah. So, what I want really. What I really want that this aircraft is, is tight. And I can feel some kind of... No, oh, it's actually pretty good. How, do, how is it your side? Yeah, I'm not feeling any leaks. You're looking for air leaks, right? I'm looking for air leaks, exactly. So classic... Maybe a little bit up here, actually. Yeah, yeah. If that's fixable or that's just how it is? No, that's fixable. Definitely here. That's blowing from there and that's what I'm feeling again. From this um, yeah. air condition thing. Now we go back to my little finding list here. Uh, little snaggies. Exactly. My, my world has been mostly test flying and going through is the most efficient way to test all the modes in a rapid fire sequence. Right. So we don't put 20 hours on people's airplanes before they take delivery. How much of um, a break? Do you, do you break it in for them or how does that work? They still get an airplane they have to break in? Uh, so with a manufacturing tolerance of the Austro engine, just like a car, it doesn't require a break in. Wow. So are we happy with this speed and descent rate? Sure. <laughs> the modern engine is, is kind of super cool in that it protects itself and it's water cooled so you're not going to worry about shock cooling it or anything like you would with a gas engine. The crankshaft is going in there into the gearbox and then the propeller will be attached here. We run about 2310 rpm on takeoff and in cruise it's about 2000. That's always kind of discussions we have like oh the left engine is not doing the same as the right. Then I always tell the people like hey you know they're not synchronized it's two. The RPM being on spot, yeah, like that's impressive. Uh, just the oil pressure. But I mean, hey, it's two engines. How should they know that they should work exactly like the the other one? You could also argue that one is kind of working harder than the other because they aren't counter rotating. So or that, yeah. They are dealing with different. Good point, forces. actually. Yeah. There down there, you see the nice uh, train railway with the nice bridges. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's it called the Semmering Bahn. It goes all through the mountains back there. And on the wingtip right now, you see one nice bridge also. Yeah, that's cool. And those are pretty old, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah, very old. Vienna has some of the oldest architecture I'd ever seen, like this road built during the Roman Empire. 
Here's a 90 second montage of my afternoon in the city with Mickey. This building, what do you see? Have you been ever to Rome? Oh, okay, Colosseum. Exactly. What the, the architect tried to use here is three kinds of building styles. And how he did that? The glass is for the modern art. The Colosseum shaped like stone is for the Roman. And now the special thing is the Gothic from the St. Stephen's Cathedral is in the glass. So this is how he got three styles in one. That was actually my, my German teacher teaching me that. So Mr. Bauer, thank you for that. <laughs> What we're getting now is a real Austrian classic one. In Vienna, I would say a Eitrige und a 16er Blech. It's the sausage with cheese inside, so that's really good. I wish I could have stayed longer, but this trip really was basically all business. So maybe I'll get you to take it while I change headsets and change batteries. All right, I got it. You got it? I'll call tower in a minute. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Cast under carriage switches. Super simple. And there's no gear speed limit, if I remember correctly? The gear is fine, and then uh, a good ref speed, V ref is be about 95. Uh, it's a little bit faster than kind of like short field published speeds, but it'll give you a good feel for the transition. So you're just gonna fly it all the way to the runway at that speed and ease the power out and just fly her onto the runway kind of thing. Just hold the nose off. Did we just happen to leave that on 3 18, they're identified 11 southwest, cleared left base, runway 33. Left base 33 three for Diamond 18 and uh, VIP and controls. <laughs> And, Watch uh, out. We're gonna request uh, some stop and go to begin for this thing, please. Roger. So, did you set that, or was that happen to be already 3 3? Uh, that was already there. Okay, is that So, it? what I like to do sometimes is you go to procedures, select approach, back it up. RNAV 3 3, vectors, who cares, activate. Now, there's your thing, cleared left base. So, that'll give you a good idea of where you're going. Pattern altitude is 1,900 feet. Once we're in the control zone, we'll, you can go ahead and turn your fuel pumps on now. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. If you remind me when we get back, I'll draw a schematic so you, I can show you how they work. Okay. All right, so fuel pump's on, gear to go. Yeah, so go ahead and square it off a little bit here so you have lots of room. So I'm feeling like a, we're five miles out, 150. That's okay. It slows down very quickly, okay. so. Uh, so I gotta get down, though. You can just go ahead and start pulling the power back now. Where do you normally like to put gear in? I usually go either a glide slope intercept on base, or a beam if I'm in the circuit That's kind of thing. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So um, now, because we're not really getting the chance to be a beam. So yeah, so if I get cleared on a base, I always put it in somewhere on the base. So okay. whenever you're ready, go ahead and drop the gear. I get down to 19. So I got nothing to check but lights, right? There's nothing to look at, no mirror. Yeah, yeah no mirror. So three green. There's 1900. Yep. And so you've got the runway in sight now? I do. Okay, and then, uh, like I said, on this one, you're gonna have to start slowing her down when we get approaching, because we need 113. So let's say 110 knots is our maximum speed for flaps, yeah. and it will be way nose up. Okay, um, I don't want to send, so I'm gonna lose my speed now. Yeah. There so it is. There we go, so I'll give you a notch of flaps here, and we'll just make sure we maintain uh, less than 110 knots the whole way in. Watch your speed there, add some what power. What do I want? Add power, so at, what, what? at least 95. Okay. Um, see how quickly it slows down. Yeah. So in this particular airplane, slowing down is not a problem. In the 50, it's a little more yeah, of I a... I totally expected a problem. The RV, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, which is why I don't want to put in the last notch of flaps yet, because it gets really draggy at full flaps. All right, and I want to make sure I stay under 110. Yep. Yeah, you're fine. So 95 to 110 is what we're looking for? Yeah, and so 95 on final, and you can just fly 95 all the way the runway is, is good. I'd like you to pitch for 95, power for whatever it takes to make your spot. Everybody wants to do the super science thing and be like, I want 33 and a half percent power. And you're like, oh, just, just, just feel her out is the best way with this airplane to kind of feel her out. So about 95, we have 8,800 feet of runway. Uh, we're cleared, stop and go. All right, are you good for the last notch of flaps? Yep. There's your last notch of flaps. Um, so yeah, even with full flaps, 95 is a good speed to trim for. So I'm feeling high, correct? Yep, you're high. But that didn't last long. I ended up getting shallow. Um, and having to drag this one in more than I'd have liked. Let's get to 90. Yeah, so try to get that above 90 there. And then once you get 
catch the glide slope that you want, then bump in a little bit of power. So the props are super disky and draggy there. So yeah, so see how quickly it bleeds speed there? Yeah. So that's a decent, uh, decent uh, glide slope there. Like, uh, yeah, like I said, 8,800 feet of runway. So let's go ahead and keep the nose down to maintain that 95. And then bump in some power to catch the same. Right so a little bit more power. There we go. Perfect. Right down three, three, Mike and we're going to fly that all the way down to the runway. Maybe a little bit more power. There you go. It has a weird power band with a turbo, right? So that down low, it doesn't affect it quite as much. Like up high, you get more power for movement down than you do down low. So so a little bit extra power here, so you're not tempted to uh, pull back too high. More power? I just, yeah, no, you're good. Just fly down to the numbers, we're good. All right, then I'm gonna pull it off. Just go ahead and start easing that power back now, and then just fly her down to the runway to keep that nose down. And then, yeah, keep the nose out. Now hold her off there. Just hold her off. Now get that power out. There you go. Just hold her off. There you go. All right. All right. Flaps coming up. Your flaps are set for takeoff. You can do a stop and go whenever you're ready. I managed the approach profile much better on the second one, so I felt a lot more ready. But the tension was real leading into this trip. After the acceptance flight, Mickey used painter's tape to mark the area that maintenance needs to look at to fix that seal. When the aircraft is finished, I come here to get all the paperwork. The final steps getting ready really did feel as exciting as this music. Of course I forgot my pen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the right serial number. That's me. And we have everything. For every aircraft, I'm working here with the aircraft documents every time. <laughs> That's cool. I can't thank sponsors and community supporters enough for helping with massive productions like this. On a walk around? The final one. Okay, so this is it. Get ready to go. So the next episode of this series will begin the journey, playing Follow the Leader as Mickey follows us across multiple countries in the first leg that brings us to Denmark and then across the North Sea and ultimately to crossing the Atlantic. I'll be publishing the parts for this series back to back over the coming weeks. And just as I did with this one, I'll be sharing raw bits with Patreon supporters throughout the editing process, things that don't make it into the final edits that are still cool to watch. So I definitely appreciate the support there. And if you're not already on board, please check it out at patreon.com slash flight chops. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. In case we have good weather, which I doubt a little bit tomorrow, mm -hmm. here is an active volcano.